One of the most promising biotechnologies is genome editing, this process where we get to edit genes with a protein from a micro. Margaret, this is something that has changed the way we treat cancer, the way we treat immunodeficiencies. This is the future of medicine. Now, we just found a new protein that is actually way better than the one before. Before, the, the common process is called CRISPR-Cas9, and Cas9 is the protein from a micro that can actually have the property with two RNA strands to go and do cuts on, an, on a gene sequence and remove it and replace it with something else. It's something that they do to protect themselves when they're in the microbes. They figure out a way to apply it to mammals and to humans now. Now, they have discovered a new protein that is actually even better because it's simpler. It only needs one strand of RNA, which makes the process so much easier. And imagine this as, as the old time of video editing, where you had two strips of film and they had to overlap. Well, with Cas9, they couldn't overlap the cuts. They had to do the cut and that's where it stayed. Now, this new protein, CPF1, allows for the edit to be overlapped, giving them chances to redo it. What's the Which end game? Which is crazy. What are, what are they trying to, what's the end game for this? The end game is to make the easiest way for doctors to develop the right gene therapy to the disease that you have based on your DNA. I think that's very, very important to understand. The whole point of this, these are kind of molecular scissors that go and snip out a portion of your DNA that might be damaged or that might make you uh, propense I mean, I, for I a disease, and they go and they change it so you are not propense so to that disease. They're changing the DNA sequence, exactly, is what you're saying. That they, change, they, they do a, an edit to the DNA sequence to get a certain uh, develop in your, in your body to, for your immune system to work a certain way and attack this ele foreign element instead of this other foreign element. You know, some, of, some, some people that suffer from immune diseases, their body fights against them. So they need to go and reprogram the body so it stops fighting against them. What would this do to pharmaceutical companies in the event that they're no longer needed? I mean, if you could just fix the DNA sequence that's creating the issue in your body, be it you know bad cells, what would that do to all of this unneeded medicine? Here's the thing. Most of this research is driven by the big pharma. Right. So it will be their business still. But it's very important. that you, I, I like that you mentioned that because there's something going on that transcends science and goes into business world because we have a war of patents. We have MIT versus UCLA trying to patent this technology and they're, 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 they're in legal proceedings trying to, to keep the information. Why? Because Silicon Valley, one of the biggest and fastest growing sectors of Silicon Valley and, and startups are biotechnology. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they license these technologies from the universities and then they can use them on their products mm -hmm and profit from them and the university gets their share. So it's very important that, to understand that this research, although very promising and has, you know, this will be life changing for many ca cancer, cancer patients because it will become very much, so much accessible. This technology will be more accessible to these people, but they are fighting for the patent because, you know, it's, at the end, it's a business. It's cutting edge and, and you can see how this could make someone a great deal of money. I mean, I mean. It, it's, it's, a revolutionary aspect of biotechnology that in the future, this is how you're going to get your medicines done. They're going to find out your DNA sequences that need to be changed and they will deliver these molecular scissors to your body. Let us know your comments below and if you haven't, please subscribe to the Lib TV.